system operator. That will be true in general, and that's why I'm including this factor of i here in my definition of the generator. Okay, so, so a bit of language now. I call p the generator of the transformation, and you can see that even though there may be an infinite number of t's labeled by this parameter a, there is only one generator. So if I decide instead of focusing attention on the group element, if I instead decide to focus attention on the generator of the transformation, now I again have a finite list. Okay? So I could now start to study this finite number of generators and try to study the properties of the generators. Okay, one more example that I, I wanted to look at of this, which, which doesn't use um, an operator, just a matrix, is, well, is, is the following. <coughs> Um, let's consider a rotation. So we have under a rotation um, the vector x, y goes into x prime, y prime. And this is equal to, so you've all seen how vectors are rotated into each other. Acting on x, y. And what do I want to do? Well, I would like to consider an infinitesimal rotation, in exactly the same way that I considered an infinitesimal translation. So let me put theta equal to epsilon infinitesimal. What would the cos of theta be? This will be 1 plus order epsilon squared. Everyone happy with that? Okay. Just Taylor expansion, sine theta would be equal to sine epsilon, I should, let me put the epsilon in here. Sine epsilon would be equal to epsilon plus order epsilon cubed. So what would this matrix turn into? This would be 1, 1, minus epsilon, epsilon, um, x, y, which can be written as 1 plus I epsilon into naught I minus I naught x, y. So you can see that uh, I've written this in exactly the same form as the translation case. So this thing sitting over here That is now my generator of my rotations, okay? And let's see, is this really true? Well, if it is really true, then I claim that a, a rotation by a finite angle, so let's say some rotation as an angle theta, would be given by E to the I theta T. So let's check and see if that's true. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask you to check, well, this is a trivial thing, right? You can check that t squared naught i minus i naught, naught i minus i naught. So you do that matrix multiplication, you will just get the identity. So t squares to 1. Now let's use that in this expression. If I power expand this thing, I find I'm getting a 1 plus i theta t minus theta squared over 2 factorial times by 1 minus i theta cubed over 3 factorial times by t, and so it continues. <coughs> so this looks like um, 1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus multiplied by 1. And over here we have um, i theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial, and so it continues, multiplied into 2. If you were to calculate the higher terms, yeah, you'd see you're just getting a cos theta. This is what you're building up. So this is cos theta times by 1 plus i, and here you're building up the sine theta. Sine theta times by t, so that would be if you add up all of the terms. <coughs> so now let's assemble these two. Well, cos theta multiplied by 1 will tell me I'll get a cos theta on the diagonal, a cos theta on the diagonal. 
I multiplied by t, I multiplied into that, I gives me a minus. So I would get a minus sine theta. And the I multiplied into that minus, I gives me a 1. So over here, I would get a sine theta. And I have, again, reproduced the finite rotation. Okay. So, so I gave you two examples of this because this is actually a very um, general rule that, that is, is important, that you need to know. And it's the following. <coughs> if you have the generators of a group and you exponentiate it, you will get a group element. That is an absolutely general statement about how the generators are related to the group elements. <coughs> Something that was not typical here is that in the two examples that I considered, I had a single generator. I had a single generator for my translations. I had here a single generator for my rotations. That's not true in general. If I wanted to perform a rotation, a, a translation, sorry, in three dimensions, well, the operator that would do that, that would now be labeled by a vector displacement. And that would look like e to the i. We would have the x component of a multiplied by px. We would have the y component of a multiplied by py, and the z component of a multiplied by pz. OK? But now we can see another general rule emerging. To specify a translation, um, over here I have to specify three continuous parameters. How many generators do I have? Three. Over here, to specify rotation, we had to specify one angle. And there was one generator. That's also um, um, a general rule. If you have um, a group element and you need to specify n parameters for the transformation, you will have a total of n generators. Um, so what that tells you is uh, we have gone from considering the properties of an infinite number of group elements to considering the properties of a finite number of generators. That's what we've gained by doing this. OK. Now, we did some work yesterday. And yesterday, we learned that we should focus our attention on the irreducible in equivalent representations. Now we've said that we're going to focus our attention on the generators. A natural question to ask is, if we want to focus on the inequivalent irreducible representations, what does that imply for the generators? What should we be focusing on at the level of the generators? And to, to um, figure that out, we're going to explore a few properties of the matrix exponential. So let's write down our group element e to the i alpha, I'll call my generator t. And I'm going to perform a similarity transform on this group element. So here is an a to the minus 1. Here is an a. And what I would like to do now is I'd last like to ask, what is the effect of the similarity transform on the group element? And to see this, we can do it as follows. So, so what should we think of for the exponential? Well, that's easy. We should power expand it. It's defined by its power expansion. Plus i alpha t minus alpha squared over 2 factorial t squared dot, dot, dot. And an a to the minus 1. Now I'm going to start multiplying this a and the a to the minus 1 in. For the first term, a times a to the minus 1 is just 1 plus i alpha. Now I get a t a to the minus 1 for that second term. Let me come to the next term. This is minus alpha squared over 2 factorial. I have an a. I'm going to write this as a t a to the minus 1 a t a to the minus 1. 
and you'll notice that what sits here is just a fancy way of writing t squared, right? Because the a to the minus 1 times the a is the identity, t times t is t squared. And so it continues. But if I look at this, well, what is this? This is 1 plus i alpha, a t, a to the minus 1, minus alpha squared over 2 factorial, a t, a to the minus 1 squared. And so it continues. Well, this is just the power series expansion of e to the i alpha a t, a to the minus 1. So if you want to perform a similarity transformation on your group element, that's equivalent to performing a similarity transformation on your generator. So when we said that we only wanted to consider um, representations that were inequivalent, we could now say to ourselves, we only want to consider sets of generators which are inequivalent. So the statement that we found yesterday for the representation carries straight over for um, the generator. Are there any questions on that? Everybody happy with the conclusion? Does that mean yes? Good. Okay. So, so now, let's ask ourselves, what about reducible? Well, if a matrix has a block diagonal structure, so, so let's say that we're considering some matrix T, and T has a block diagonal structure, there's a north, there's a north, there's a T2. I'm going to consider three blocks. Of course, it's, it could be any number of blocks. Um, then one of the things I'll leave you to check, maybe you can see it immediately, is that if I were to raise T to the power of N, this block diagonal structure is preserved. And all that I get is each of the blocks inside my matrix are now raised to the power of n. So if I was looking for a group element that was reducible, so I want my group element to be block diagonal, well, I know that e to the i alpha t is equal to some sum from n is equal to naught to infinity, i alpha to the n over n factorial t to the n, if I want this to be block diagonal, that will certainly be the case if all of these are block diagonal, the t raised to the power of n. And those will be block diagonal if t itself is block diagonal. So if I want the group element to be um, reducible, I can ask if the generator is reducible. Equivalently, if I want to focus on irreducible representations for the group, I will focus on irreducible generators. So we see that our statements about equivalence and reducibility that were made at the level of the generators, uh, that were made at the level of the representation, the group elements, they actually carry right over for the generators. Okay, good. So, so it does seem like we're, we're going to get um, out of our difficulty if we focus attention on the generators of the group. But when we wrote down our multiplication table, this was what we said was the specification of the group. So the one thing I could ask myself now is, well, what replaces the multiplication table at the level of the generators? 